we wanted we wanted that seamless uninterrupted flow that was just magical in the first spider-man game um but what we do have which is awesome is you have the kick up of snow every time he does a point launch or you know he's, he's going on the street you can see every individual footprint uh, get revealed so it really has a, a level of immersion that we can that we can get i do want to call out our sound department because the, the sound you know it's a huge city you can hear the difference in footsteps from when he's on snow to slush to just con wet concrete and that just brought another level to the overall soundscape uh, the rhino fight at the beginning of the game is pretty it's just a big spectacle like it's pretty spectacular like no pun intended but like it's just like putting stuff like that together are you guys trying to outdo yourself from the last game because <laughs> that game is also full of a big spectacle like do you feel like you've you've reached a point where it's like even bigger this time i think the wonderful thing about insomniac games is we never we never rest in, in our success right so marvel spider-man is an amazing game we all love it i mean people are still playing it today it's incredible but we knew there are areas that we can improve upon and one of them was uh, trying to get more of a seamless cinematic experience uh, an immersive cinematic experience that that flowed very naturally from gameplay into cinematic moments back into gameplay again so that was that was one of our core pillars is how do we take our set piece moments and make them even more spectacular by by removing any rough edges in them and bringing the peaks higher right so whenever we are doing a an activity like for instance on the bridge i'm doing what is you would consider maybe a qte but i'm you know i have to i have to web web up a bus right but i'm using my web shooter so it, it is a systemic move just presented in a more exotic way so we try to make sure any of our more exotic sequences felt like actual gameplay with the buttons that you would use in normal gameplay. So that was one of our big focuses. Now you say no loading screens. That's for the PlayStation 5 version. The uh, uh, PlayStation 4 version, you still have the subway loads. I don't know what you call those, but um, can you tell me about some more differences between between the two systems that players can, can expect to see? The, the PlayStation 5, one, we were just able to take full advantage of all the features in the PlayStation 5. And um, one of those things was graphics fidelity. So you're gonna see ray trace reflections everywhere in the game on the PlayStation 5. Um, that is not something we're gonna feature on the 4. Um, our, the haptic controller is gonna have a, a next level of immersion that there'll be a rumble on the 4, but the haptics really allow bioelectricity to travel from one side of the controller to the other. Um, it, it makes the web swings feel that much more visceral when there's resistance on the trigger as you feel the connection of a web and, and, and the tension as you, as you swing through. So we have those wonderful features. Um, the SSD obviously allows us to have, if you if you die or if you're wanting to fast travel, near instant load. So just fade down, fade up, you're gonna keep uh, playing, playing the game. So we have no loading screens. In the PS4, we would have loading screens on those fast travels or, or deaths. Um, so those are fundamentally uh, some of the, the differences between the two systems. I would say as a gameplay experience, they should feel in parity. Like it's not going to make one game doesn't feel you know much different than the other. But those those enhancements that we're talking about really add up to make it feel like this is the definitive Spider-Man experience on PlayStation 5.